Welcome back to this series on topology. In today's video, we'll be looking at continuous maps, which in some sense is what topology is really all about. You can find a link to the playlist containing all the videos in the series uh, by clicking on the info box, which should appear in the top right right now. Let's dive straight into the definition of a continuous map. So if we have two topological spaces, x and y, then a function f between them is called continuous if for every open set v and the codomain y, its preimage, so f inverse of v, is open in x. More succinctly, a function is continuous if the preimage of every open set in the codomain is open in the domain. As a reminder, if you're unsure what the preimage is, it's just the set of all points in X that are mapped to the set V. So this is all X and X, for which F of small x is an element of the set V. So essentially, if we have our set Y here, and we're given some subset V and Y which is open, then we pull back this subset along our function f into the domain uh, x, and we get some subset of x, which is the preimage of this v. And these are precisely all the points that are mapped to v uh, under f. And now this subset, the preimage of v, needs to be open in x, and this needs to hold for every open set v in y. Now, because topology is essentially the study of continuous maps between topological spaces, if I just say map, I will usually mean a continuous function. That is, if I'm talking about functions between sets, I'll just be calling them functions. And if I'm talking about continuous functions um, between topological spaces, then I'll just refer to those as maps usually. Sometimes I'll call them continuous maps, and sometimes I'll just say map if it's clear from the context that the, uh, well, the function in question is supposed to be continuous. Okay, so much for the terminology. So you might know the definition for continuity uh, for functions that go from the real numbers to the real numbers. And there the definition is that a function is continuous at some point x0 uh, in the reals if for all epsilon greater zero, there exists some delta greater zero, such that if a point is epsilon close to x0 in the domain, then also the images uh, are uh, epsilon close. So if we draw the graph, what we're saying is that a function is continuous at some point x0 if we can choose some small epsilon radius around uh, the image f of x0, and then still be able to find a small delta interval around uh, the point x0 that maps completely within this uh, epsilon uh, radius around the image. Now in real analysis, one then goes on to say that a function is continuous if it's continuous at every point in the domain. Now one can generalize this definition of continuity from just the reals to a general function that goes from, say, Rn to Rk. And in that case, one has to use balls of radius epsilon and delta around uh, the corresponding points. But then one can formulate the same definition. So one says that for all epsilon greater 0, there has to exist a delta greater 0, such that if, and now this condition with the delta becomes that for all x in the delta ball around x0, we have that the image, so that's f of x, is in the epsilon ball around f of x0. Okay, so that's the definition one usually makes in real analysis. And now the question is, what does continuity in this epsilon delta sense have to do with the notion of continuity we've just defined? And in fact, these two notions of continuity are equivalent. And this is something that one sometimes also proves uh, in like a real analysis course. So the fact that the uh, preimage of open sets are open 
is equivalent to this epsilon delta definition with the, the delta and epsilon balls in Rn. I'm not going to give a proof of this in detail, but it's um, not too hard to see why this is plausible. Basically, if we just look at the picture that I've drawn in the bottom left, uh, we can think about what these epsilon and delta balls would be doing in the case where uh, this, this picture is, say, in R2. I'll redraw this picture uh, so that it doesn't get too cluttered. So we choose some point x0 in the domain and look at its image, f of x0, in the codomain. And now uh, our analysis definition of continuity, so that's what I've written down here on the right, is saying that we need to, for any epsilon, look at the epsilon ball around the image point. So that would be something like this. And now we need to find some delta around uh, the point x0, such that if we're in the delta ball around x0, so that would be uh, some delta ball here, so this would have radius epsilon and this have radius delta. Then if we're in the delta ball around here, then after this delta ball maps entirely into uh, the epsilon ball around the image point. And now hopefully you can see that this is actually pretty similar to the picture I had here before, where instead of an epsilon ball around the image point, we had just some arbitrary open set in Y. And instead of this delta ball around X, we had uh, the pre-image in X. Now, if we know that this property, so this analysis definition holds for uh, all points X0 in the domain, then we can actually prove this uh, other definition of continuity that we define in terms of the pre-image of open sets. Namely, if we have uh, some arbitrary open set in Y, so this would be the orange set, um, then we can, for each point in that set, we can find a small epsilon ball around it that still fits within it. So this orange set would be, say, V. And now if we look at the pre-image of V, we need to show uh, by our definition that this is open in X. And how do we do that? Well, we need to find for each point, uh, we need to find some small, well, delta ball around the point that fits entirely within the pre-image. But this is possible precisely because we're assuming this analysis definition of continuity. So that's a very rough argument for why the analysis definition implies our definition of continuity. Now conversely, if we have that the pre-image of every open set in Y is open in X, then um, it's not too hard to find this delta um, for which the delta ball maps entirely into an epsilon ball around the image point. So in this case, we don't necessarily have this delta ball already given. We're trying to find it. So in this case, we look at the pre-image of this epsilon ball around the image point, And this doesn't necessarily have to be a ball again in X. But we know that the epsilon ball in Y is an, is an open subset. So if we assume our uh, topological definition of continuity, then after this uh, pre-image will be open in X. And in particular, this means that for any point, we can find a small uh, open ball surrounding that point that is still contained entirely within the set. So we can find some open ball around x, 0, that is still contained entirely within this uh, yellow set, so the pre-image of epsilon. And well, by definition, this means that this uh, yellow set, uh, well, this, this ball is mapped into uh, the epsilon ball. And it has some radius delta, and we can choose that radius, and that will give us uh, the, the delta for our analysis definition of continuity. Therefore, our topological definition of continuity implies the analysis definition. Okay, so I said I wasn't going to prove that these two things are equivalent, but now I've basically just sketched the entire proof of why they're equivalent, and I hope you see how uh, they're related to each other. Now, if we have this definition of uh, continuity already, uh, well, in terms of these epsilon and deltas, why do we need um, this definition that I've just presented in terms of the uh, open sets and their pre-images? That is, why don't we just use the definition we already know from analysis? And the reason for this is that, well, in order to form these uh, delta and epsilon balls, we need to have some notion of distance uh, on our space. 
So these things uh, only exist if our space is actually a metric space. And in general, uh, we're just looking at topological spaces which don't necessarily have to have a metric on them. Thus, for such a general topological space, this definition doesn't even make sense. Aside from this fact, even if we do have metrics on our topological spaces, uh, usually this definition in terms of the open subsets and their pre-images is uh, much easier to work with because you don't have to always worry about these uh, epsilon and deltas. And, and moreover, the analysis definition is basically like a point-wise definition. So one has to check this for every point in principle. While the definition we've just given in terms of uh, open sets and their pre-images is, is more global. So if you're used to working with the definition for uh, Rn, then I hope that the following propositions and their very simple proofs convince you that this uh, definition in terms of the open subsets is, is pretty good. Okay, so before moving on, let's observe that because these two definitions are equivalent for Euclidean space, it means that all the functions you already know to be continuous between Euclidean spaces uh, are still continuous now in our, with our new definition of continuity. This immediately gives us a ton of examples of continuous functions. So for example, every polynomial uh, function is continuous. Uh, linear maps between Euclidean spaces are also continuous. Uh, we have functions like exponential functions, the logarithm, absolute value function, and all trig functions. They're, they are still continuous in, uh, in our new sense of continuity. Now, the following proposition shows that we could have chosen a different definition, namely that we could have defined continuity in terms of closed sets rather than in terms of open sets. The proposition says that a function f from x to y is continuous precisely when the preimage of every closed set is closed. Hence, formally, we've just replaced the word open in our previous definition with the word closed. And in fact, this gives uh, an equivalent definition. The proof of this is just by taking complements. We've seen in previous videos that we can switch between open sets and closed sets by, by just taking complements. So anytime we have a statement about closed sets, and we already know the statement for open sets, usually we just need to apply a complementation to everything and then the statement will follow. Now in this case, we also need a fact about pre-images, namely, um, so recall that the pre-image of a complement is the same thing as taking the complement of the pre-image. The picture is essentially this one. We have uh, our sets x and y, and now we look at some subset A of y, and we look at its pre-image in x, so this will be part of x. Then on the other hand, we have a complement, and then we have the complement of the pre-image. And now this equality is saying that the complement of the pre-image, so that's if we sort of sit in X and we look at the complement of the pre-image of A, so that's the green set I've drawn, this is the same thing as the pre-image of the complement. So suppose that we're in the complement of the pre-image, so we're not in the pre-image of A, so we have some point here, let's call it X. Well, by definition, this means, because we're not in the pre-image of A, that this point is not mapped to A, so it has to be mapped to a complement. So the image of this point x has to lie in a complement, but this by definition means that x is in the pre-image of a complement. So we have this inclusion. And now conversely, if we have some point um, x that's in the pre-image of a complement, then we know that x has to map to a complement so the picture is unchanged. But in particular, this means that X does not map into A because A and A complement are disjoint. So it's also in the complement of the pre-image of A. So that gives us the other inclusion and that shows the equality. 
with these kinds of statements that are almost tautological, it's usually best if you just uh, write out the short proof for yourself so that you, you're convinced that this is indeed the case. All right, so we have this property that the preimage of the complement is the complement of the preimage, and we'll put this to good use in uh, the following way. So first, uh, to prove direction left to right, we assume that f is continuous. So that's in our uh, sense of continuous, which means that preimage of open sets is open. Now we need to show that also the preimage of every closed set is closed. So we let C be a subset of Y that is closed. But now by definition, this means that C complement is, well, it's also a subset of Y and it's open. And now we just take the preimage. So we know that because F is continuous, the preimage of this open set is open in X. And now we can use our formula for extracting the complement out of uh, the brackets. So the preimage of C complement is the same thing as the complement of the preimage of C. So because of this equality, we know that also the complement of the preimage of C is open in X. So we have that the entire set here is open, but because this is a complement that is open, it means that the set that it's a complement of is actually closed. So in fact, inside here, this has to be a closed set. Hence the preimage of C under F is closed in X. And that's exactly what we wanted to show because we started with a closed set C and now we've shown that its preimage is closed in X. Now for the other direction, we assume that the preimage of every closed set is closed. And we want to show that the function f is continuous. So what we actually need to show is that uh, the preimage of every open set is open. So now we basically do the same argument as before, just with open sets. So we have some v and y, which we suppose to be open. Well, this implies that the complement, which is again a subset of y, is closed by definition. Now we look at the preimage, which we know to be closed in X by our hypothesis that the preimage of closed sets is closed. But this thing is by our equality for the complements is just the preimage of V complemented. Therefore, this entire thing is closed and it's a complement of something. And that means that this something it's a complement of, so this inner part is open. Hence, the preimage of V is open, and this is precisely what we wanted to show, because we started with an open set, and we showed that its preimage is open. As you can see, this whole proof was basically just uh, complementing everything and then using the compatibility condition with the preimage. In future, I'll probably skip proofs of this type because they're always pretty straightforward, but I thought I would show you how to uh, do this with a complementation once so you get the idea. In summary, instead of using open sets for our definition of continuity, we could have also used closed sets. And this proposition can be useful because sometimes it's easier to describe uh, the closed sets of some topological space than it is to describe its open sets. This also mirrors uh, what we saw when we defined a topological space, namely that instead of using open sets, we could have also defined the topology in terms of closed sets and then defined the open sets as the complements of the closed sets. So because of this duality between closed and open sets, um, one can basically just work with what's most convenient. Okay, next up, we're going to prove that some basic maps are continuous. The following proposition states that first, uh, constant maps, 
So that's uh, functions that map uh, in the entire domain to a single point in the codomain. Those are continuous. Then second, identity maps between spaces are continuous. And third, if we have some uh, continuous map between uh, a space X and a space Y and an open subset U of X, then if we restrict the function to that subset U, then this resulting function is also continuous. So this gives us a way of, uh, well, getting new continuous function from old ones by restricting. And finally, uh, if we have two continuous functions, um, so one from x to y and one from y to z, then we can compose these functions and the result will also be continuous. Now for the case where our topological spaces are just Euclidean space Rn, we already know because of the equivalence between the epsilon uh, delta definition of continuity and our definition in terms of the pre-image of open sets, we already know that the constant maps, identity maps, and composition um, are continuous if we are just looking at Euclidean spaces. But now we have to more generally, for a general topological space, we have to show that these maps are also continuous using just our uh, definition with the pre-images of open sets. For the proof of these statements, I'm just going to draw some pictures and, well, give the proof in words. So for the first uh, part, A, we're looking at uh, some constant function from x to y. So what this means is that we have some point, say y0 in y, and the entire space x is mapped to this y0. Now we need to check the definition of continuity. So we need to check that for any open subset of y, its pre-image is open in x. Now there are essentially two cases. So the first case is that our open set in y does not include the point y0. So we might have some set in white here that avoids the point y0. But in this case, uh, its pre-image, the pre-image of this white set is the empty set because there's no point in x that maps to it. I'll write this as the pre-image of this white set is empty. But remember, one of the axioms for a topological space was that the empty set is an open set for any topological space. So in this case, uh, the empty set is open. Okay, now the second case would be if uh, this white set, uh, the open set in Y, includes the point Y0. So let's extend it a bit, and now it includes the point y0. And now its pre-image is going to be all of the space x. Why is this? Well, because every point in x maps to y0, and y0 is part of this set we're looking at. Remember, again, that by the definition of a topological space, the entire space always has to be an open set. So also in this case, we have that the pre-image of this open white set is open in x. These two cases exhaust all possibilities. So in every case, if we have an open subset of Y, its pre-image is going to be open in X. Next, let's consider point B. Uh, here we have a situation where we have the topological space X twice. Now we again need to check that the pre-image, so we're looking at the identity map, we need to check that the pre-image of every open set in X under the identity map is again open. But if we have some set U in X that's open, then the pre-image under the identity map is just again the same set U. This is because the identity map maps every point to itself. In other words, the points that map to themselves under the identity are just the points themselves. But now our situation is again a bit tautological because we've taken some open set in X and we ask its pre-image to be open, but the pre-image is just the set itself, which we assume to be open, so we're always going to be good. And this shows that the identity map is continuous. Next, let's look at C. Here we have some space X and space Y. And we have some subset u of x, which we assume to be open. And now we know that the function f is continuous 
uh, as a function from x to y, and we want to show that the restriction of f uh, to this open subset u is also continuous. How do we do this? Well, we take some open set y, so this is a v, and we look at its preimage in, uh, well, in u. But we know that it also has preimage in x, so this pink set here is the preimage of v under the original function f, so where we were considering x as the domain. And now the part I'm shading in red, so that's the part that lies within u, is the preimage of v under the function that's restricted to u. Just to clarify, in the case where we're looking at the pink preimage, that's the preimage under the original function f, and the red preimage is the preimage under the restricted function. And we need to show that the preimage under the restrictive function, so the red set, that that is an open set um, of the space u. What we know is that the pink set is open in x because f is continuous. However, now we have this additional information that u itself is an open subset, and we know that the red preimage, uh, so the preimage under the restricted function, is just the intersection of u with the pink preimage. So that's something that you can easily check. Now, by the axioms of a topological space, we know that the intersection of any two subsets that are open is also open. So in particular, this red preimage is an open subset of X. And now by the way, we define the new topology on the smaller um, set U as being the subsets that lie within U that are also open in X. We see that also this red preimage is open within uh, the topology that is induced on the subset U by the topology of X. Therefore, the function that we obtain by restricting to this open subset u is continuous. This whole restriction business might be a bit confusing because we're sort of working with two different spaces and one is kind of a subspace of another. But thinking about this will become much more clear once we introduce the notion of a subspace of a topological space, um, which will kind of generalize what we've done here. Now, our final uh, part of the proposition states that the composition of continuous functions is continuous. And here, uh, well, we can just draw a quick picture. So we have three spaces, x, y, and z. Now we have these two functions, f and g. And we know that they're each continuous. And we need to show that their composition, which I'll denote g after f, is continuous. What do we need to do to show this? Well, we need to take some open set, let's call this V uh, in Z, and we need to show that it's pre-image in X, so that's the pre-image under the composed function. And here the brackets are to indicate that it's the pre-image under the composite. We need to show that this set is open, but now, we can basically just split uh, this up into two steps. So we look at the preimage of the set V in Y under G. So that's the blue set. And we know because G is continuous that this set is open. And now again, we can look at the preimage of this set we obtain in Y under the function F. So we get some blue set that is the preimage of the preimage of G. Um, of v. Now, because the preimage under g of v was open in y, it means that this set in x is also open because f is continuous. Now, we can ask how, how are these two sets related, the green and the blue, and in fact, these two sets are equal. This follows straight from the definition of what it means to be in the preimage. So, suppose that some point uh, x is in the preimage of this composite. Well, that means that uh, the point X is mapped under G after F into this green set V. So here we have G after F of X. But G after F of X is by definition just G of F of X. So this means that F of X 
is in fact in the pre-image of v under g because, well, because g of f of x is in v. But this means that x is in the pre-image under f of the pre-image under g of v, again by definition. And so we've shown this one inclusion that this pre-image of the composite is included in the, well, the blue set above. We can reverse this argument and start with the point x in uh, the blue set, and then by definition this means that f of x is in the pre-image under g of v, which by definition means that, well, g of f of x is in v, but g of f of x is just the same thing as the image of x under the composite, and that means that, in fact, x is in the pre-image of uh, under the composite of v. So we're here. And this shows the other inclusion, and so we've shown the equality. And now, uh, by the previous uh, argument, we know that this blue set is open, and because the blue set is equal to the green set, we now also know that the green set is open. And in total, this shows that the composite of two continuous functions is continuous. We conclude by showing a proposition which basically says that the continuity of a function is a local property. So, what do I mean by this? Well, in the case where we uh, define continuity for a Euclidean space with the epsilon delta definition, uh, one does it as follows. One first defines what it means to be continuous at a point x0, and then one says that a function is continuous globally if it's continuous at every point in the domain. Now, in our definition, we've given a global characterization of, of continuity, where we say that a function is just continuous globally uh, to start with, if the pre-image of every open set is open. Now, suppose you know that the function is sort of continuous locally for every point, then the question is whether it follows that it's uh, continuous globally and vice versa. And the proposition here is saying that this is in fact the case. So it states that a function is continuous if for every point in the domain, we have a neighborhood around that point on which f is continuous. So by this I mean the restriction of f to that neighborhood is continuous. So this would allow us to take some generic point in the domain and just look at a neighborhood around it and see if f is continuous there. And if that's the case, then we conclude that f is continuous globally if the point we chose was truly generic. And in some cases, this can really cut down on the, uh, well, the effort that's required to prove that a function is continuous. All right, so let's look at the proof of this. First, the direction left to right is pretty immediate because if we assume that a function from x to y is continuous, then that means that every uh, pre-image of every open set in y is open in x. And we want to show that each point has a neighborhood on which f is continuous. But because, uh, well, the entire space is an open set, we can just choose the entire space to be a neighborhood for, for any point in that space. So we let x0 be some point in x, and, well, we note that x is a neighborhood of x0 because it's an open set that contains x0, and we already know that f is continuous, uh, well, from x to y uh, by assumption, so obviously then f restricted to x, which is just f itself, is going to be a continuous function again. So we know that f from x to y is continuous. That's what we assumed. And hence, we found for each point x0 and x a neighborhood, namely the entire space itself, on which f is continuous. So that shows that direction. The other direction is the one which actually requires some effort. So for this, we assume that each point in x has a neighborhood on which the restriction of f to that neighborhood is continuous. And now we'd like to show that the entire function f, which is not restricted, is continuous. 
So we have our space X and our space Y. And now we look at some uh, subset, let's call it U of Y. And this is presumed to be open. And now we look at the pre-image of U and X. So this will be the orange set. And we want to show that this orange set is open. Now the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna uh, use a nice characterization of a set being open, namely a set is open if and only if for each point in that set we can find a neighborhood around that point which is entirely contained within the set. I'll indicate uh, why this should be the case later on in the proof, but for now this should just serve to motivate why I'm doing what I'm doing next, which is uh, choosing some point uh, x0 in the pre-image, and this is an arbitrary point, and now I want to show that there's some neighborhood around this point, so that's an open set containing the point, which is entirely contained within the pre-image of uh, u under f. But now by assumption, I know that this point x0 has some neighborhood on which the function f restricted to that neighborhood is continuous. So this could be maybe this pink set here. Let's call it v. And this is the neighborhood on which f restricted to v is continuous. We can now ask what happens if we look at the pre-image of u under this restricted function. And in fact, this pre-image will just be the intersection of this uh, neighborhood v with the pre-image of the unrestricted function, which is the orange set. So I have this purple uh, shaded region, which is the pre-image uh, under the restrictive function of u. And for this, I've used the fact that this pre-image under the restrictive function of the set u is actually just the intersection of the pre-image of the unrestricted uh, function intersected with the neighborhood v. This is something you can check. It follows immediately from the definitions. Okay, so we found this purple set, and this looks like a promising candidate for the neighborhood around x0, which is contained within, uh, well, the orange set. So why is it contained within the orange set? Well, because it's an intersection with the orange set. And so any intersection with some set is contained within that set. So we fulfilled one of the conditions we want. Now the other condition is that it needs to be a neighborhood so in particular, it needs to, well, be an open set. But we know that it's open because it's the pre-image um, of an open set under this restrictive function, which we assumed to be continuous. So in fact, this purple set is a neighborhood of x0 that's contained within, well, the orange set, which is the pre-image of uh, u under the unrestricted function f. Now, because x0 is an arbitrary point, we can do this for any point in the orange set, and this implies that the orange set is open. Why is this? Well, if we have this property for each point, we can rewrite uh, the, the set as the union over all the x0s which are in the set, and then we just take the union over all the neighborhoods of these x zeros that we found that are still contained within uh, the orange set. So for each x zero in this orange set, we found a neighborhood which is still contained in the orange set. Well, this means that the union of all such neighborhoods is gonna be contained in the orange set. And conversely, because we've taken the union over all points uh, in the orange set, it means that every point uh, in this orange set is also contained in the union because we're unioning over neighborhoods of, of every point in the set. So in fact, we have the other inclusion and that shows the equality. And now just observe that all these neighborhoods are open and we know by the axioms for a topology that arbitrary unions of open sets are again open. So in fact, this entire union is open and that shows that this set is open. Therefore, in summary, we've shown that if we take some open set u and y, the pre-image under 
the unrestricted function f of that open set is again open. And this establishes that continuity of a function is a local property in the sense that it's enough uh, for it to hold for neighborhoods around each point uh, in the domain. All right, with that, I'm done with what I wanted to say about uh, continuous functions for the moment. If you're seeing this definition of continuity for functions between topological spaces for the first time, I hope that this has given you some sense of how uh, one works with this definition. And if you're already familiar with, with the definition, I hope that uh, some of these propositions serve as a reminder for uh, ways in which one can check if a function is continuous or not. In the next video, we'll be looking at uh, some very special continuous functions between topological spaces, uh, namely ones that are invertible and whose inverse is also continuous. These maps are called homeomorphisms, and they basically say that two topological spaces are essentially the same uh, from the point of view of being a topological space. Being able to define this notion of topological equivalence will then uh, clarify what is really important about topological spaces. So when things matter for topological spaces and when they don't.